the last lecture I introduced the concept of minimal sufficiency and completeness of certain statistics or uh, again it, these are also the properties of the family of distributions. Uh, before we proceed further I will define a related concept that is called boundedly complete. boundedly complete statistic or boundedly complete family of distributions. So, we say that p is equal to p theta is a boundedly complete family of distributions if expectation of g x is equal to 0 for all theta and g bounded implies that probability of g x is equal to 0 is 1 for all theta. So, the difference from the definition of completeness is that there we wrote any function g. So, expectation g x equal to 0 for all theta and any function g if that implies that the probability that the function is 0 with probability 1 then it was complete. If I impose the condition that g is bounded then it will imply that uh, probability of g x equal to 0 is 1 then it will be called a boundedly complete family of distributions. So, we can say that completeness implies bounded completeness. However, the converse is not true. I will give an example here. Let x be a random variable with probability mass function given by p theta x is equal to x is equal to 1 minus theta square theta to the power x for x equal to 0, 1, 2 and so on and p theta x is equal to minus 1 is equal to theta. Here theta is between 0 to 1. Now, you can easily see that theta plus sigma 1 minus theta square theta to the power x x equal to 0 to infinity that is equal to theta plus 1 minus theta square divided by 1 minus theta because this is infinite geometric series with common ratio theta. So, this cancels out you get 1. So, this is a proper probability distribution. You can say it is a shifted uh, geometric kind of distribution. Let us show whether it is complete or not. Okay. So, consider a function h x then its expectation can be written as h of minus 1 into theta plus sigma h x into 1 minus theta square theta to the power x, x equal to 0 to infinity. Now, suppose we equate it to 0 for all theta in the interval 0 to 1. Now, this term I take to the right hand side and then we divide by 1 minus theta square. So, it is reducing to h x into theta to the power x it is equal to minus h of minus 1 theta divided by 1 minus theta square. This is for all theta in the interval 0 to 1. Further this 1 minus theta square in the denominator. So, if I bring it to the numerator it becomes 1 minus theta to the power minus 2 and I can expand because theta is in the interval 0 to 1. So, this we can write as minus h of minus 1 into theta and this expansion can be written as 1 plus 2 theta 
plus 3 theta square and so on. Now, if I consider these two terms, the left hand side is a power series in theta and the right hand side is also a power series in theta. So, if I equate the terms, we get equating the coefficients of the power series on both the sides. we get h x is equal to minus x into h of minus 1 for x equal to 0, 1, 2 and so on. Now, if h of minus 1 is bounded, then h of minus 1 must be 0 because if h of minus 1 is not 0, then this function is unbounded because it will be x into some constant. So, for boundedness, the only possibility is that h of minus 1 is 0, which will imply h of x is equal to 0 for all x. That means, probability of h x is equal to 0 will be 1 for all theta in the interval 0 to 1. So, h is boundedly complete. not uh, x is boundedly complete, but if h of minus 1 is not 0, then h of x is also not 0. This implies probability that h x is 0 cannot be 1. So, h is not complete, because expectation of h x is 0, but h x will not be 0 with probability 1. So, this is an example of a boundedly complete family of distributions, which is not complete. Now, there are uh, relationships between sufficiency and completeness also. Also, there is a general way of determining complete statistics. For example, if the distributions are in the exponential family, I have already given the example of binomial distribution, Poisson distribution. So, in the Poisson distribution, family is complete. If I consider sufficient statistics or minimal sufficient statistics, that is turning out to be sigma x i which is again having Poisson distribution with parameter n lambda. So, if Poisson lambda is complete, Poisson n lambda is also complete. So, sigma x i is complete. So, we can conclude that in most of the standard examples that we have discussed, the corresponding sufficient or minimal sufficient statistics will also be complete. Let me just take the example of uh, uh, non regular family. Say, Let me consider say x1, x2, xn following uniform 0 theta distribution. Then xn is minimal sufficient, we prove that xn is complete. Let us consider the distribution of xn that is n x to the power n minus 1 by theta to the power n 0 less than x less than theta it is 0 elsewhere. So, if I consider expectation of say g of x n is equal to 0 for all theta, then this statement is equivalent to g x n x to the power n minus 1 by theta to the power n d x from 0 to theta is equal to 0 for all theta. Now, this is equivalent to saying a function of x over all the intervals 0 to theta is integrated to 0. Again by the Lebesgue integration theory, it implies that 
g star must be 0 almost everywhere. This g star function I have taken to be this. So, this implies that g x is equal to 0 almost everywhere on 0 to infinity. This implies that probability that g x n is equal to 0 is 1 for all theta. So, x n is a complete statistic. So, there is a relation between minimal sufficiency and complete sufficiency. In fact, we have the following theorem. If T x is complete and sufficient, then T x is minimal sufficient. However, the converse of the above statement is not true. That is, we may have example of say minimal sufficient statistic which is not complete. Let us take say x 1, x 2, x m a random sample from normal with mean mu and variance sigma 1 square and y 1, y 2, y n this is another independent sample from normal with mean mu and variance sigma 2 square. Here sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square are different. Let us consider the joint distribution of x 1, x 2, x m and y 1, y 2, y n. The joint PDF of x 1, x 2, x m, y 1, y 2, y n. Okay. That is equal to one by root two pi to the power m plus n sigma one to the power m sigma two to the power n e to the power minus one by two sigma one square sigma x i minus mu square minus one by two sigma two square sigma y j minus mu square. This we can simplify as 1 by root 2 pi to the power m plus n sigma 1 to the power n sigma 2 to the power n e to the power minus sigma x i square by 2 sigma 1 square plus m mu x bar by sigma 1 square minus m mu square by 2 sigma 1 square minus sigma y j square by 2 sigma 2 square plus n mu y bar by sigma 2 square minus n mu square by 2 sigma 2 square. So, if we apply the ratio by writing down this joint PDF at two points x y and say x prime y prime, then these terms will get cancelled out and we will be left with sigma x i square minus sigma x i prime square into parametric function x bar minus y bar into the parametric function x bar minus x bar prime y bar minus y bar prime and sigma yj square minus sigma yj prime square. So, if we write down this function here say f x y mu sigma 1 square sigma 2 square divided by say f x prime y prime mu sigma 1 square sigma 2 square 
then that is equal to e to the power 1 by 2 sigma 1 square sigma x i prime square minus sigma x i square plus 1 by 2 sigma 2 square sigma y j prime square minus sigma y j square then plus m mu or mu by sigma 1 square sigma x i minus sigma x i prime plus mu by sigma 2 square sigma y j minus sigma y j prime. So, this is independent of mu sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square if and only if we have sigma x i sigma x i square sigma y i sigma y i square is equal to sigma x i prime sigma x i prime square sigma y i y j prime and sigma y j prime square. So, t is equal to sigma x i sigma x i square sigma y j sigma y j square is minimal sufficient. However, T is not complete. Let us consider G T as a sigma x i by m minus sigma y j by n. Then expectation of G T is equal to 0 for all mu sigma 1 square sigma 2 square because expectation of x i and expectation of y j is mu. So, it is m mu by m minus n mu by n, but g t is not 0. Actually, probability that g t is not 0 is 1. Probability that g t is equal to 0 is actually 0. So, t is not complete. So, this is an example of a minimal sufficient statistic, which is not complete. To determine complete statistics in general settings or to prove the completeness in general settings of exponential family, one only needs to check the kind of parameter space that we are having. So, we have the following general theorem which I will state without proof. For the proof, one can look at the book of uh, Lehman, testing of hypothesis book. So, let x be a random vector with probability distribution in an exponential family. Say we write it in the form c theta e to the power sigma theta i t x into h x. So, here c theta is a function of parameter, h x is function free from parameter and parameter is occurring in the exponent here theta is equal to theta 1 theta 2 theta k that is it is belonging to r k. Let me say it belongs to omega and omega is a subset of r k. Let us write T as T 1 x and so on T k x. Then T is complete provided omega contains a k dimensional rectangle. If you look at the previous example here, this is actually a three parameter distribution here. Here what we are getting is 1 by 2 sigma 1 square or you can say 1 by sigma 1 square mu by sigma 1 square, then 1 by sigma 2 square and mu by sigma 2 square. However, 
they are not independent actually the parameter is four dimensional if we write theta 1 is equal to say minus 1 by 2 sigma 1 square theta 2 is equal to mu by sigma 1 square theta 3 is equal to say minus 1 by 2 sigma 2 square and theta 4 is equal to say n say mu by sigma 2 square then this is a four dimensional parameter but there is dependency upon that for example given theta 1 theta 2 and theta 3 we can determine theta 4 so the parameter space does not contain a four dimensional rectangle and that is why we could actually show that this is not complete t was not complete here we have seen the application of sufficiency in estimation problems we saw that if we have an unbiased estimator we can certainly improve upon it by conditioning upon the sufficient statistics the result was known as the rao blackwell theorem now if we couple this concept with the completeness we get a stronger result in fact we can reduce the problem to determination of the uniformly minimum variance unbiased estimator the resulting result which is actually associated with the name of lehman shafi so i'll couple the two results rao blackwell and lehman shafi and we call it rao blackwell lehman shafi theorem let x have probability distribution p theta theta belonging to say omega and t x be complete and sufficient then h t is u m v u of expectation of h t let us call it say g of theta that means for any estimable unbiased estimable function g theta if i have an unbiased estimator which is dependent upon the complete sufficient statistic then that will be actually uni u m v u e let us look at the proof of this let say d x be an unbiased estimator of g theta then you will have consider expectation of d x given t let me denote it by say d star since t is sufficient d star t will be free from theta because the conditional distribution of x given t is independent of theta therefore this expectation will not contain any term of theta and we can call it d star t and so d star t is d star t suppose i write capital t here this is <coughs> an estimator now we have already seen that by rao blackwell theorem d star t is <coughs> also unbiased for g theta and variance of d star was less than or equal to the variance of d t. Now consider expectation of h t minus d star t then that is 0 because both of these are unbiased for g theta now this is a function of t and t is complete 
since t is complete the above statement implies that H t must be equal to d star t with probability 1. Essentially, it proves that H t is a unique unbiased estimator of g theta. So, H t is u m v u e. Actually, g star uh, d star is also u m v u e, but these two UMV we differ only on a set of measure 0. Now, this result is extremely useful for finding out the UMV UEs. We have seen actually in the earlier method of lower bounds that many times whatever best unbiased estimator we are able to think of, the variance of that is not attaining the lower bound, whether we are considering the Fraser Rao Kramer lower bound, Bhattacharya lower bound or Chapman's Robbins Kiefer uh, low, lower bound etcetera. In many of the cases we saw that the variance of the unbiased estimator was bigger than the lower bound, the corresponding lower bound. However, this method when we are considering a function of complete and sufficient statistic, it immediately proves that the corresponding estimator will become uniformly minimum variance and by estimator. Essentially what it is doing, it will actually show that the corresponding unbiased estimator is actually the only unbiased estimator available except of course, on a set of probability 0. So, since it is unique certainly it is u m v u e. So, if we go back to various problems where the lower bound was not attained, for example, if you consider normal mu sigma square where mu is unknown and we were considering the estimation of sigma square. So, let us consider say x 1, x 2, x n follows normal mu sigma square, mu and sigma square are unknown. Okay? And we have this s square as 1 by n minus 1 sigma x i minus x bar whole square. This is unbiased for sigma square. Now, in this problem x bar and s square is complete and sufficient. So, s square is u m v u a. We had noticed here that in this particular case the lower bound that was attained by the method of uh, Fraser or Kramer, it was lower than the variance of s square. The variance of s square was uh, 2 sigma to the power 4 by n minus 1 and the lower bound was 2 sigma to the power 4 by n. But here in this method u m v u e proving is easy because we are just looking at the expectation of s square since it is equal and it is a function of the complete sufficient statistics. So, it becomes u m v u e. Let us take other related examples also. x 1, x 2, x n following uniform 0 theta. Here we have shown that x n is complete and sufficient. Now, if we look at expectation of x n that is x into n x to the power n minus 1 by theta to the power n x, then this is equal to n by n plus 1 theta. That means, n plus 1 by n x n is unbiased for theta. Now, this is a function of complete sufficient statistics. So, by Rao Blackwell Lehman Shafi theorem, we conclude that n plus 1 by n x n this is u m v u e for theta. We 
we have also seen the standard distributions like Poisson distribution, where for lambda we are able to derive the u m v v, but for lambda square we were not able to derive or if I consider e to the power minus lambda, then we were not able to derive the u m v v, but using this method we can derive. Let me explain this here. Let us consider say x 1, x 2, x n following Poisson lambda distribution lambda positive. Now, here x bar or you can say sigma x i this is complete and sufficient. Suppose I am considering g lambda is equal to e to the power minus lambda, which I had explained actually this is probability of x 1 is equal to 0. That is the proportion of 0 occurrences in a given problem. Let us define say d x 1 is equal to 1 if x 1 is 0 and it is equal to 0 if x 1 is not equal to 0. Then if I consider here expectation of d x 1 then that is equal to probability of x 1 is equal to 0 that it is equal to e to the power minus lambda. So, d x 1 is unbiased for g lambda. However, this is not u m v u e because this is not a function of the complete sufficient statistic. So, if I apply the Rao Blackwell lemma and Shafi theorem, if I consider Rao Blackwell Lehman and Shafi theorem, if I consider expectation of d x 1 given t, t is sigma x i or x bar we can write, then this is u m v u e of g lambda. So, the only thing remaining is that determination of this function, we can de determine it easily. Let us uh, denote it by h t expectation of say d x 1 given t is equal to small t. Then this is equal to expectation of now d x 1 takes only two values 1 and 0. So, it is equal to probability of x 1 is equal to 0 given t is equal to t. Because d x 1 is equal to 0 then probability of x 1 is not equal to 0, but value 0 multiplied then that value will not matter x 1 not equal to 0 given t is equal to t. So, this term is vanishing. So, we need to only determine this conditional probability that is probability x 1 is equal to 0 t is equal to t divided by probability t is equal to t that is equal to probability x 1 is equal to 0. Now, this t is nothing but sigma x i i is equal to 1 to n. If I say x 1 is equal to 0, then we can say sigma of x i from 2 to n is also equal to t. Now, here you notice that the sum of independent Poissons is Poisson. So, the distribution of t will be Poisson n lambda and distribution of sigma x i i is equal to 2 to n that will be Poisson n minus 1 lambda. So, if we use this here x 1 and sigma x i from 2 to n these will be independent. So, this can be written as the product of these probability. So, it becomes probability of x 1 equal to 0 into probability of sigma x i from 2 to n is equal to t divided by probability t is equal to t. So, that is equal to e to the power minus lambda lambda to the power 0. So, that term will not come. Then this is following Poisson n minus 1 lambda. So, it is becoming e to the power minus n minus 1 lambda n minus 1 lambda to the power t divided by t factorial and then probability t is equal to t that is e to the power minus n lambda n lambda to the power t into t factorial. So, these terms get cancelled out and we are left with n minus 1 by n t. So, h t 
is equal to 1 minus 1 by n to the power t. This is u m v u e of e to the power minus lambda. So, this Rao Blackwell Lehman Shafi theorem is extremely useful to determine the u m v u e for various functions where the method of lower bounds is not applicable. I will be introducing in the next classes.